Let's evaluate the derivative of 1 over x using the limit definition. So 1 over x is our f of x, and by plugging that into the limit definition of the derivative, we get this. This is the limit we are trying to evaluate. The limit of 1 over x minus 1 over a, all divided by x minus a, as x approaches a. If you're used to the h approaching zero definition of the derivative, I'll leave a link in the description to my lesson introducing this alternative definition. It's equivalent and sometimes it's simpler. Once we've evaluated this limit, we'll have a function that's only in terms of a, and so we'll know what the derivative of one over x is at x equals a. The first step we're going to take in evaluating this limit is combining the 1 over x minus 1 over a into a single fraction. To do that, we're going to have to give them common denominators. So we'll multiply 1 over x by a over a. So now we have that. And we'll multiply 1 over a by x over x. So now they both have denominators of a x. And now that we've got common denominators, we can actually do this subtraction in the numerator, which brings us here, a minus x all over that common denominator of ax. This, of course, is still getting divided by x minus a. Now we can practically cancel out the a minus x and x minus a. We just need to be able to swap the a and the x. So let's do this slowly. We'll take out the a minus x. So a minus x divided by ax is the same as a minus x times 1 over ax. And then we can swap the a and the x by simply taking out a negative. That gets us here. You can see if we distributed this negative back through the parentheses, we'd have negative x and we'd have plus a, which would just bring us back to where we were. So by taking out this negative, we've flipped the order of the a and the x. And now it's very clear we can cancel out the x minus a in the top with the x minus a in the bottom. Once we do that cancellation, we're practically done. That just leaves negative one one over a x and we have to assume that a is not zero of course because we have one over a this whole time so assuming a is not equal to zero we can just plug in a for x and we find the limit is equal to negative one over a squared. Again, this whole time we're assuming a is not equal to zero, otherwise one over a does not make any sense. And that's how you prove that the derivative of one over x is negative one over x squared. So at any point, say a not equal to zero, the derivative of one over x at that point, the slope of the tangent at that point, will be negative one over a squared. Let me know in the comments if you have any questions and check out my Calculus 1 and Calculus 1 exercises playlists in the description for more. Thanks for watching.